Come on in, everybody. Good afternoon. Come on. It's a real conversation. Come on, invite somebody. It's the real conversation with Lady Charisma Evans and Pastor Cynthia Diggs. It's about to get real good, real interesting, and we are so excited. So invite someone. Charisma is ready to come on. She's ready to get on in here, and I absolutely can't wait. Come on. Good afternoon. Oh, my goodness. We are so excited. I am so ready for this conversation. And so come on, get ready, get ready, get ready. You guys should be inviting somebody by now. You should be telling somebody that they're getting ready to come on. And I don't want to waste time. I want to be ready um, for you guys to ask your questions at the end of the conversation. And so I told Charisma to be ready. She said she's ready. And so am I. I was going to do something real cute and try to sing um, one of Charisma's songs, but mm -mm, maybe she'll do that for us. Oh my God, come on, gather, gather. Lady Charisma Evans is backstage and she's waiting. As a matter of fact, I just need her to, to go ahead and log on. I'm looking for her face. I'm looking for her name. Hey, Mayon, I see you. Hey, Lakeisha. Oh my goodness, Tasha. This is not just for women, by the way. Men can come in too. Tab, Gamble, good to see you. Hey, Michael Bentley. Hello, Remy. It's just good to see everyone. Tanika Butler. Hey, my sister. We're getting ready to talk real talk. We're getting ready to talk about our journey. We're getting ready to talk about some things that we've been through as we've had to go through um, major transformation. And you guys would be surprised how we got to where we are today. We want to talk about our gains and we want to talk about our losses. And we want to talk about our new bodies. You hear me? Anybody see Charisma yet? Charisma, I think I tagged you to come in as soon as I came in. Let me check. Let me check. It says that Charisma was invited. So let me see. Where's Charisma Evans? Charisma. Oh, Charisma, where are you? There she is. She says, hey. Now, did it send you the invite for you to come on over and to join me? Because I pushed for you to come on in. Okay, there we go. And we're going to be talking today about... We're going to be talking about what we've been through, things lives. We want to talk about things that people have asked <laughs> with questions where people have <laughs> There she is. Oh, Lord, you are my shelter. <laughs> yes. Hey, shelter. Hi, my best friend. You just didn't bless me like that. You didn't bless me to sing like you, girl. Amen. Amen. Whatever wonderful change. <laughs> oh, my. Look, people are already on. We're up to 20 already. And so I told them to invite their friends. Come on in. We can really have a real conversation. I was sharing with our audience that we've been getting a lot of questions. Where people right. have been asking, turn your volume down just a little, because I'm getting your feedback. Just a little. Where people have been asking, you know, what are y'all doing? What did y'all do? What's going on? Um, are you depressed? Are you lonely? Are you starving yourselves? Um, we've been getting all kind of weird questions that have been asked to us. They've been asking us, um, do we have a new boo in our life? Are we booed up? <laughs> Are we booed up? Is that what it is in way? And I'm like, whatever happened to just wanting to take care of yourself? You know, whatever happened to just wanting to be good to you? And, you know, people just want to know our journeys. And so today, we're having a candid conversation. I wanted everybody to know that this will not be the last time that we will be speaking on various subjects that will help men, women, boys, and girls. And so I want to bring you on first. You are my guest. Um, I've been knowing Charisma, y'all, for years. We have been great friends. We have traveled the globe. God has allowed us to travel 
countries together where we've ministered in Cozumel, the Turks and Caicos, and even Nairobi, Kenya. And, and our lives speak volume. We thank God for the opportunity that he's given us. And now we're using this platform to share with men, women, boys and girls, especially our women, because our women need to understand that you need to learn to love yourself as you are, number one. But there's another you inside of there, and there's nothing wrong with going inside and finding her and being the best that you can be. So Charisma is not a stranger. She's a national recording artist. She has traveled the world with her ministry. God has afforded her many, many, many doors of opportunities to sing and to minister and to preach his word. I'm honored and I'm humbled to call her my sister and to call her my friend. And she has so graciously um, just accepted this opportunity. And so I want to relinquish my stand to her right now and let her share with you her journey, her story, her transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Charisma Evans. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. I know they were, um, they're saying they were still getting some feedback. Are y'all still getting feedback? Is it clear? Um, I think it's get, uh, on my end, it sounds good. I hear you good. You do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, again, and uh, just to reiterate what um, my sister said, we have done so much together in ministry and to um, it's always an honor and a privilege to be able to share platform and ministry opportunities uh, with, with her. I mean, it's always a wonderful time. We laugh, we cry, we know how to be we serious. I mean, we, we go through all of it all of it and um and of course of course our our lives have um have gone has just god has just really been doing some things in our lives and we don't talk every day we haven't talked every day but to know that we are still moving simultaneously is amazing that how our lives still kind of run parallel even without us knowing it, even without us talking. And so when we do talk, it's like we just pick up where we left off and we find that we're experiencing some of the same, some of the same things. So um, just a little bit, just regarding this change. And like she said, it has nothing to do with, you know, having somebody or, you know, trying to appease somebody or trying to uh, live up to the standards of someone else. What we decided to do and what we are doing is because of the fact that we made a conscious decision that we wanted to be better. We wanted to live better. We wanted healthier lifestyles. We wanted to, we realized that our schedules and what we do as far as ministry, I mean, you've seen Cindy, Lady Diggs, minister. Um, and of course, you can't minister like that under that kind of anointing and that kind of power and not be physically fit. You know, um, and so and that was my take. That was my thing. I was like, you know, moving here to Houston, coming from a church where I was at New Breed and we had one service basically. But, you know, we did move around a lot, plus doing my own ministry. But then I got here to Houston and it was like two services every every week and no no off days, no nothing. And then still traveling and doing, you know, my own personal ministry. And so one day I was sitting at home after services and I was like, man, I'm, I'm sluggish. You know, I eat and as soon as I eat, I'm going to sleep. Like this is not right. Mm. This is, this is not how they should be. I shouldn't just be that fatigued just from eating. And so I realized that it was the things that I was consuming, um, of course, uh, that was bringing everything just down and I was just it was just draining. So I, I would be tired uh, Of course tired from ministry, but the food wasn't helping and right. I, You know, so I just decided at that moment. I was like something has got to give and I started trying to you know kind of cutting back and one day <laughs> One of the uh, our CFO at the church was like, "Chris, you should come to boot camp." And I was like, "Girl, I'm not coming to boot camp. Y'all finna kill me, <laughs> honey." And let me toe all up. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> was like, no, no. and true. And I, I ended up. They kept saying, so I went, and I was like. 
True, and as I thought, honey, told my shins, oh, oh. he put no heels on it. <laughs> was like, listen, <laughs> and you know she don't go nowhere without them heels, honey. <laughs> that Sunday for church, I was in some spares. <laughs> Listen, ma'am. <laughs> I said, honey, I can't put my heels on. So, um, and then I thought, and then I realized, of course, you know, in order to continue, in order for that soreness to go away, you gotta do it again. So, and, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep working that muscle because I was working muscles that had not been worked, that had not been used. So it was like. Okay, this is a, a my body was like, okay, some this is something different, honey. This ain't just no pick them up, put them down type of workout and regimen. This is something else. I'm something is being worked. So, I, in order to get that muscle and to stretch that thing and to get it to where it needs to be, I knew that I had to continue in that path and the process. So, I did and started going to the gym. And the next thing I knew, then it's changing eating and everything just started transforming. Before my eyes, I didn't even realize it. All I was, all I was really focused on was just trying to. I wanted, to, you know, to get this weight off. I wanted to feel better. I wanted to have more energy, more stamina, and all of those things, so that I could effectively do exactly what God has called me to do. You know, I'm no good to any of the people that I'm standing in front of if I don't have any strength and no stamina, no energy. Talk to about that, that. like. And these people, they're expecting and they're pulling on you and you have no energy, no strength, no nothing to do anything. So it's draining. So by the time you get done, you out of there. And that's why Mondays became my day to just sleep. I was like, I got the, I got to be able to recoup, but it became more than that. And so once my body and I started taking my body through this journey and through this process, of and a process of elimination, eliminating things from my diet, eliminating things that I know that was not going to be conducive to where I was right. trying to go, you know, and then setting realistic goals. This is why do people be saying they want to lose a hundred pounds in two months? <laughs> that's, not not, that's, that's, that's not realistic. Come on, it's not. realistic goals. Uh huh. You have to be, because if you don't, you will actually, you will burn yourself out. You'll become frustrated. And that's just how it is. Even in ministry, when we try to, we try to do so much at one time and trying to do it all, we want it all right then. And you can't handle that. Your body can't handle that. You mentally, you can't handle that. Exactly. You try to do, so now you're stressing your body out. You're stressing yourself out. You just, you overwhelm. And then before you know it, you quit so which is why we pick up stuff put it down pick it up put it down and we go from one diet thing to another we start calling it diets i was like it's not a diet for me anymore it's a lifestyle change it's yes. my lifestyle this is who i am this is what i do i don't just you know um I'm trying because I'm trying to get in a in a particular dress or a particular thing. I am doing this because I it has become a lifestyle, and in that it it has actually you know you start seeing the results of the lifestyle change. Let me ask you something, Charisma. That's real good. Um, now you said so many things, but one thing that I want to touch on is it can't be just to for an event or mm -hmm. to get into a certain outfit because mm -hmm. after you've gone to that event or worn that dress mm -hmm. then what you know you go back to your regular life that's why mm -hmm. it has to be a lifestyle change i heard you say you know you wanted to do more for god be able to minister more effectively exactly when did you with did the light bulb come on that you really needed a transformation in your body mm -hmm. It happened. How many years ago was it? I now it happened because I have I've I've done this and stopped and done it and stopped. That's but what I want to I never just truly committed to that, to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was only for a moment. It only had lasted for just a, a brief moment. So it was like I would do it and then when I saw results, it was like, oh I'm good. You know, and then I stopped. 
but not realizing that in order to maintain where I was, there was still a behavior that had to be perpetuated in order to keep that to keep that moving and to, and to stay there or to even continue moving forward. So it's like, you can't, I, so years ago, and then when we came, when we went to Kenya, came back from Kenya, listen, let me tell you they something. don't know what Kenya did to us. <laughs> tell them what around the corner means. Baby, around the corner in Kenya is about a mile. And, and I we had, had to walk. And we had to walk. And then That's preach. And, and then preach. And then climb up the stairs. Three, four flights of stairs. Cause and there's then no walk room. back to our hotel. Uh-huh. Walk back to our room. Walk that, back down them, them flights of stairs. So, and all of those things. So when we, and then we really weren't eating because the diet in Kenya and Africa is so much different from how it is here. So mm -hmm. what we're accustomed to and the type of seasonings and the type of things that we're, we're expecting, you're not getting that there. So it was like, <laughs> Lakeisha, maybe it's about, I need to go to Kenya. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Honey, I'm telling you, but you will, lose, like, you will lose weight. Baby, I promise you. When I came back, you could see my bones, these bones right here. All this right here, you could just see. I was putting those shirts. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even realize until I tried on something when I got back. And I was like, oh, my God. I couldn't really wear this when I left. And we were gone for two weeks. But, and so I, so then I got back, from, we got back from Kenya. And it was like, okay, so what we're going to do, the Lord just convicted me. He was like, get up. Because by the time, of course, I wasn't working anymore. I was in full-time ministry. It was like, get up and start walking and start doing something, doing some type of exercise. And I got up and I started doing it. And I was changing my, you know, eating and things like that. And then uh, I kept it up for a few months. And then after a while, I got comfortable. And that is the, that is the enemy. We, that, that spirit of comfortability being comfortable, that thing, when it rests on you, it will cause you to forget about everything else. And you'll just, you'll just start going back through Talk, picking, Talk. Up, picking up behaviors and doing things that you used to do. And then all of a sudden you're back to where, um, uh, back to where you were before. And so, and that's what happened to me. When I got back here, when I got to Houston, I pretty much had to start all over because I had gained weight back plus some. And so it was like, oh, this is not, this ain't right. And so at this, at that point, when I realized in February of last year, there needed to be a change. I hated going to the doctor. Let me tell you something. I hated going to the doctor. I hated getting on the scale. I didn't like it because I didn't like what I saw. And tell the truth. And, and because of that, you know, because I, you know, I'm, I, I am confident. It wasn't that I, you know, had low self esteem, but I still was not happy with where I was and with, with, I, with what I was seeing. And even in my numbers and, you know, and in my clothes and different things like that. So it was like, okay, something has got to change. And so when I got to the, when that when I got to the point of being fed up, not nobody else, because everybody else was like, "Girl, you look fine. You cute. You this. You that. Okay, cute face, but I'm unhealthy." And stop telling me my face is pretty, and I'm and I'm struggling, and I'm struggling. Yes, it's like cute face, but my blood pressure is high. Cute face. Because people people will let you stay where you are because. And I get a lot of this, and I know you get a lot of it too. When we talk, where they say you were, you look fine the way you were. Why do you want to lose weight? And even now, where I am, you know, I re I, I was gonna ring the bell because I've been, I've been saying fifty eight pounds. I've lost fifty eight pounds, but I've reached sixty. I've finally reached sixty. I've I've lost sixty pounds and fourteen inches, and I'm just I don't. Charisma. Okay. And people go, why do you want to lose weight? You look fine. Why do you want to lose more? And I'm not even done. And I go, because I have goals. Mm -hmm. What about the goals that I've set for me? Absolutely. And so you used already two words that are so important. You said we get comfortable, but we must remain consistent. 
Mm -hmm. And those are two words that are so important in, in going through a life transformation, not just weight loss. You also said, I'm not on a diet. And I hope everybody's listening and paying attention to what you said. It takes consistency. It takes not being comfortable. And you can't limit yourself to a certain uh, event in order for your whole life to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is so, it's such a key element. And even days when I don't feel like it, because there are days when I don't feel like it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to suit up. I don't want to put on more sneakers. I don't want to walk. I don't want to do any of that. I want to binge. I want to eat what I want to eat. I, all of those things. I have those moments. But matter of fact, the other day, and this is, this is, the, what was it? Saturday. True story. I was sitting, I would just walked out of Dillard's. I was a few feet from the Cheesecake Factory. I had the website up. I had put, I had the cheesecake I wanted and I was getting ready to add it to my cart and something said, don't do it. Holy Ghost said, stop that. Don't do that. Don't do it. It ain't even worth it. And I, and I shut the app down and drove off the parking lot. Today, I was in Walmart. I was walking around and I was hungry. I said, nope, Charisma, get out of this store because what you're going to do, you're going to end up picking up the wrong thing and you're about to mess up. And I brought myself right out of there. So the, the other piece to this is discipline, self-control. And there is one thing that we all, that we lack, that we struggle in, and that's that thing of self-control. Yeah. So control and that's in every area of our lives we have to allow god to govern every area of our lives and listen to that voice and submit because it's going to help us and be a blessing for us in the long run because it's like i mean for me when i um just you know losing this weight not only you know i see the rewards and it does and it is built you know confidence and all of these things but the main thing for me is I feel so much better. That part right there. I feel so much better. I feel, honey, when they say, since I laid my burdens down, I feel better. I feel better. I, I, I really do. I mean, my blood pressure medicine was lowered. I was taking a 50, you, Jesus. a 70, a 75 slash 50 or 50 slash 75, one of those. I'm now down to like a 10. My blood pressure medicine has come down tremendously. Switch the medicine. I mean, all of those things that were where I was wearing, y'all don't know, but I wore long skirts all the time because my feet and my ankle swelled. I didn't, I, was, I, I didn't want that to be seen. So now when y'all see me in these pictures and my legs is crossed, I got my legs out, all of that stuff, that's because of what has happened as far it. as my, 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 the transformation. You know, and I'm still working on it. I'm still, still day, day to day, every day, it's having to make that conscious decision to, you know, do what's going to be best for me and for my body. Yeah. When I started this thing, I was 343 pounds. 343. Charisma. Three. I don't believe you. When I, w I went, went to the doctor to have a procedure done, for my ear and I got on the scale and I was 343 pounds in December of last, in December of 2019. No, 18. 18, yeah. 18. 343. Bless the Lord. Look at I you got now. On the scale this morning and I was 269. How much? 269. Girl, Somebody needs to cash out charisma right now for tenacity and for and just for oh my god, you are helping. What an awesome story! I, I and guys, guess what? We've never talked like how much we weigh, we've never talked. All we mm -hmm. my story is a little different from hers. I wanted y'all to hear her story because a lot of people think because we've done ministry so much together that. You know, we, we went into this together, that it was like, uh, 
a sister thing, a twin thing, and it wasn't. Like, when Charisma went to Houston, she did her own thing, and she started her own workout regimen. You know, she started for the reasons that she said. She knew that she couldn't be as effective in ministry, and that she just wanted her body to look better and feel better, and that she wanted to give God a better praise. You know, we often say, I want to shout, and I don't want to be tired. That thing is real. When you're overweight, you can't even give God a perfect praise. Mm -hmm. You can't even give him the praise that you want because you out of breath. You dance a little bit, then you be like this. Because mm -hmm. you're tired, and people don't want to admit it, but it's real. It, it was like three years ago for me when I just buckled down. I was always a sick kid. And I, I shared that with, with my sister when we even met. I said, I've always been ill. I've had respiratory issues all my life. I was in and out of the hospital um, every season. I just had double pneumonia just a couple years ago. Um, I had a bout with my spine where I couldn't walk for six months. And my mom had to take care of me and my family. And I remember asking my PCP, what could I do? You know, because I had declared my healing, but I had to get to a place where I felt better about my body. And my doctor was like, a lot of this, you don't have control over. But what you can always do is make a better effort into taking care of your body. When I heard those words, it did something to me. I didn't mm -hmm. want to be somebody that couldn't walk. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair. I did not want to be, you know, wasn't even 50 years old. For, in my 40s, talking about I, I, I'm, I'm out of breath. Mm -hmm. That's the devil. Yeah. And I remember hearing my doctor say, do what you can mm -hmm. with what you have. Mm -hmm. You can walk more, you can drink more water, and you mm -hmm. can watch what you eat. And I began to work out with my brother, and I'm going to give him a shout out, Pastor Patrick Diggs, my only brother, who has Temple 12 Fitness, Faith and Fitness. He has a 12-minute DVD where I purchased his DVD during the time that I was ill, and I, I plugged it in, and I began to watch him work out for 12 minutes. And I said, I can do that in my living room. He told me, just do this 12 minutes. If you do it one time a week, that'll get you started. I started doing that a couple times a week and I noticed a change. Mm -hmm. I started drinking, I drink like eight bottles of water this size a day. It's a mm -hmm. gallon. I drink at least a gallon of water a day. Just mm -hmm. like Charisma stated, I, I walk. I would intentionally park my car if I'd go to the mall, I would park at the end of the mall. I wasn't looking for the close parking spots because when you're trying to do a lifestyle change, you don't look for convenience. Somebody mm -hmm. feelings just got hurt. You can't yeah. look for convenience. It's not yeah. convenient. It's going to be uncomfortable. I would park far and walk far. If I just mm -hmm. needed something that cost a dollar, I would walk for it. And my body started adapting to the change. Mm -hmm. Three times a week, I would work out. I would walk. I would squat. Do my squats. I would do jumping jacks. Some days, I would be crying. This is the stuff people don't talk about. I would mm -hmm. be crying because I didn't want to do it. My body would be aching, and I would be like, I don't want to work out today. It hurts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told my brother just last month when we were doing the virtual boot camp two months ago, I said, I want to work on my stomach. I said, he said, yo, the neck, look, like I got a rooster neck, y'all. Look at this. Look at this. When I pull, look at this. Gobble, gobble. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see your neck. You got one, too. Gobble, gobble, gobble. He said, your neck. We had sibling time the other week. He said, Cindy, put a belt. You can put a belt on. Your pants falling down. And other people were noticing changes in me that I didn't notice myself. I was doing the work, but when I start seeing it, I hope this helps somebody, and then I'm going to ask Charisma a couple questions. When I started seeing the difference, it made a difference. It didn't matter what other people were saying. I saw it. I looked in the mirror and said, girl, your, your, your face smaller. My sister with her teasing self, talking about you don't have a double chin no more. And people will tell you these things when you're making changes, but they won't tell you when you're in it. Listen. They're not going to tell you, girl, your face show down. 
Girl, you, you need to do something. You're breathing kind of hard. Nobody would say anything. Right. But when the changes start taking place, they notice you look different. You sound different. I can preach longer. I can yep. feel it. I, I'm not winded. Yep. I didn't even realize it was a big deal. And, yeah. and pounds started coming off. And it was never my goal to lose weight. I did a consecration where I gave up meat for 28 days. I asked my mentees, let's all give them something for one month. And I picked the shortest month on purpose. See, God got a sense of humor. I said, I'm going to pick February. And I'm going to go without me 28 days. And God said, when I got to March, give me another month. And that other month turned into a life transformation. Mm -hmm. A consecration turned into a transformation. Yeah, You can't true. just do this on your own. You have to also communicate with God. Mm -hmm. And so, Charisma, I'm going to ask you, what has been your biggest challenge as you've gone through your 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 weight transformation? And you look good, by the way. Let me, let let your sister tell you publicly. I've been telling you behind the scenes, you look good, Charisma. Thank you. Your sis. body looks good. Your self esteem has been elevated. I've never known you to have a low self esteem, but I do see a difference in you because you've made an accomplishment that you probably never thought you could. Right. What has been your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is I like sweets. <laughs> You know my prayers be full of candy. Why you going to do me like that? I like sweets. I know. And it is. I, I, I kid you not. I love, I love, I love sweets. And yeah, I mean, because like even as a kid, and I thought about, I thought about it. As a kid, when my mom cooked, our meals weren't complete unless that was a dessert. I don't care what it was. If it was some canned peaches, if it was a cake, because my, <laughs> my mama could cook. So whatever it was, we were going to have something to end that was uh, that meal, whether it was a some bluebell or whatever. We was gonna have something sweet. So my challenge has been sweet. So for me, and I'm talking about me, when I initially started, I had to just cut cold turkey. I couldn't Ooh. play with it. I couldn't play with it. I couldn't be like, okay, well, I'm gonna just have a little bit of this. I couldn't do it. Because for me, you know, you get take an edge, you go take a, you go take a foot, you go take a mag, and so you're not gonna end up doing what needs to be done. So I had to just cut cold turkey until I got myself myself disciplined enough. Because sometimes, every now and again, ladies, I know some men in the room, but ladies, y'all know that time. Most of us, we're going to crave either something sweet and salt or salty. Some chocolate. Yes. And that's, that's, that was my thing. And so every now and again, I don't deprive myself. I will. I'll have it. But I've, I've learned and I have disciplined myself enough that when I have satisfied that craving and what I was looking for, to throw it away. I don't have to eat anything. I can have... Suckers, candy, stuff, and people still give you that stuff. I can have that stuff in my house and in here and not touch it. Or I can eat just what I needed just to satisfy it and then throw it away. I don't have to have the whole thing. And oh, that, that is what has, you know, learning to condition myself and to discipline that self discipline. I can't say it enough. Self discipline is what is going to be a key element. So, that probably has been the uh, the biggest thing, um, and with you know the ske with schedules and stuff, and just trying to factor in. You know, I started having to like more or less travel with my own snacks because I did not want to get myself to the place where I was, you know, just started eating. Because when you get on this road, you know, it's easy to grab a bag of chips as the as opposed to grabbing a bag. I just had to had to get myself to that place, but yeah, that's real important, and I agree with you. What helped me too, because we're on the road so much, is mm -hmm. everybody that's close to me. Mm -hmm. They became a part of my journey. 
Mm -hmm. My mentees that work real close with me, they start packing things for me. Because mm -hmm. when we're traveling, after we finish, the first thing we want to do is eat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we get done with uh, ministry assignments, it's late at night. And so there's mm -hmm. nothing open but McDonald's, Burger King's, mm -hmm. Denny's. Yep. You know, and you want to go to those fast food places or go mm -hmm. and sit down and eat. And then what do we do after we eat? We go to sleep. And go to that sleep. is so unhealthy to not get any exercise in. And we're eating after we've ministered and poured out, but we're not eating healthy stuff. And all of my mentees, even my family, everybody I'm around, they started being a part of my journey. That's when they know you're really serious. So they mm -hmm. pack me nuts. Yep peanuts, you know, I'd get my protein, you know, what's that tuna in the can, the crackers, yep. I would be watching the sodium that's even mm -hmm. in those foods and even the yep. sugars, you know, bananas, yep. the fresh fruit, even the fresh fruits, yep. I learned, they have a lot of sugar, but if we eat them in moderation, like moderation. you said, the word is moderation, we, is. we have to learn how to modify and do things in moderation. And that also has a lot to do with what we ingest in our bodies. And, and people don't like drinking water. Um, how are you with drinking your... It, like, uh, I was getting ready to ask. I'm a water drinker. I drink it, drink it, drink it. My young, uh, whatever. My young, uh, about curds she and whey. She tells me all the time all I eat is curds and whey. But you know what? It helped me with my weight. So... Uh -huh. It helped me with my curves and weight. My curves and weight. <laughs> but another thing that I want to share with the people before I ask you your next question, I never started this journey to lose weight. Yeah. yeah. The purpose was not to lose weight. Mm -mm. I didn't go into it trying to lose weight. Right. I wanted a better body. I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to give God a better praise. I mm -hmm. wanted to be able to give God more of me. Mm -hmm. And traveling gets you tired. We mm -hmm. run through airports. Like Charisma mm -hmm. and I sat up one night and we talked maybe three hours and we talked about our different engagements that were coming up and things that we have been doing and how many times we have been in an airport in the last couple of months. And I was like, do you not know that that wears us out? That we're running through the airport, we're constantly in the air. We can't be out of shape and doing all of this traveling. And it's not a good witness when you're standing up before God's people. I'm getting ready to hurt somebody's feelings now. When you're the preacher or the psalmist or whoever you are delivering and you are not in shape, but you're telling people about a God that can do anything. My God. If he can do anything... Why he ain't did nothing with you? Uh -huh. How about it's not God that hasn't done it? You haven't allowed God to do it anyway. Absolutely. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Talk about that. Yes. Why do we put it all? There's an obligation that we have to this journey, and it cannot be just to lose weight. If I had to ask you, what are three things that you can truly say have changed in your life as a result? What would you tell me those top three are? Uh, things that have changed? Yep. yep. Um, well, I definitely, of course, I would say, you know, my energy, the stamina, uh, more of the stamina and then of course um uh, just being able to still um function and be able to do so what was big for me was so that I can I can eat and still be able to function. Yeah. Or I can do whatever it is that I'm doing and still have energy to do whatever it is that I needed to do. So having the energy and having stamina, it is funny because even at church, they'd be like, honey, you're trying to kill us. You're losing weight and you're going to kill us in the, in the, in the meantime. Because <laughs> like you just going and going, but it's because, you know, that stamina and that energy that I have now that I didn't have before, you know, and probably could, uh, 
could you know i could go there but honey it's nothing compared to where it is now so that stamina that energy and then i just feel so much better about myself that part that it part. changed how i saw myself and that i didn't just allow myself to become comfortable where i was i'm not settled just with you know just okay well this is good right here no i'm always aiming for even more even better um because of where you know where i am and because my mind has changed your mind there has to be a change of mindset you cannot continue to do this thing and try to do what you're doing and you still have the same level of thinking your your thinking has got to change Everything in you, it has to change. Everything has to line up. Your, what, what you're thinking and how you move and what you do, all of those things have to be in sync. There is no way possible that I can continue to, I want to still, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this today, but my mindset is still thinking how I used to think. No, my old, that old mindset is not going to work. What the Bible says, you can't put, new wine and old wine skin. skin it's gonna burst it's gonna burst it's going to burst it cannot hold it so you have to change there has to be a newness you have to have a renewed mind your uh all of those things to be able to continue with this journey otherwise you're not gonna last you're not gonna make it and you're gonna continue to feel like you're defeated and the enemy will play those games with you and make you think that you cannot do it or that you don't have it. God has put something on the inside of every last one of us. We are equipped to do what it is that God has for us to do. We just have to tap in and know that you have it. Don't let the enemy, don't let things and circumstances and situations make you think that you do not have it. You possess it. He's given it to you. He's given you the power. He's given you the ability to do. He's giving you that power. So you can do it. You just got to change your mind. You got to change your perception. You got to change how you look at it. You got to change the fact that you're not doing it for somebody else. Because somebody called you fat. So now I'm on a diet. Bump them. They talk, fat talk too. They fat too. Cause honey, just cause you just cause you you might not be as large as I am, it still don't mean you're healthy. And I wanted to talk of touch on that a little bit because people think that healthy is a certain size and women have it so bad. We're going to mm -hmm. come back at another time where we're going to truly just talk about self-esteem issues, mm -hmm. not so much just weight, but Charisma and I are going to be discussing self-esteem and how to get where you need to be things that are keeping you bound because you feel bad about yourself and where they stem from. Those things that were spoken over you when you were a child and now you can't get out of them now that you're 30, 40, 40 years old and you're thinking that's who you are. You are not what you were called. You are not what you were done, I, what you did. You are not the things that I you feel did. God right you there. are not the things that you were called. And so we want to talk about self-esteem and when people look at certain bodies, they look at and especially men, they'd be like, oh, she fine, you know, because she a size four, six, eight. That don't mean that she healthy. It's a mind thing. You can be a healthy size 22 woman. And a lot of people don't believe that. You can. If you are doing what you need to do for your body, if, you, if your numbers are right, if you are getting some exercise in, if you are eating the right food, ingesting the right stuff, you you healthy. It's not a size. It does feel good when you can go look in your closet and you realize I can't wear that size anymore. And then your body has gone through a transformation, but it doesn't do any good to be a certain size, but you don't size up to what God wants you to do. Girl, I'm about to run. Lord you can't mercy. size up. You can't come up to what God wants you to do because you're so concerned about the external. But mm -hmm. your internal is no good. Absolutely. Yes, we've worked on our bodies. Yes, mm -hmm. we've worked on the things that we can do on the outside. But it's also a mental thing. Mm -hmm. Charisma just stated it's a mindset. And mm -hmm. if your mind isn't set on those things that will help you, you will never be able to change. You will never be able to accomplish 
those things that you set out to do. I never thought I could sit down and eat a well-proportioned meal because, you know, we were raised in a home where, you know, y'all know how black people are. Food is love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they love you, they feed you. Absolutely. We went through it in Africa. Every time we were minister, they would sit us in front of a big old plate of food. Mm-hmm. And and it's hard to break those 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 habits that have been instilled even from a little child. Mama would say, "Eat all your food, don't yeah. throw nothing away." And so yeah. that's in your mind, even when you're not hungry, you're thinking, "I need to eat all of my food," but my body is saying, "I don't want that." Mm -hmm. And so we adjust to what we've been taught, and you have to change what you've been taught so that you can change the way that you live. I yeah. don't need a five course meal every time I sit down. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't. I don't. I don't need all of that. I don't need uh, 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 two pieces of meat, three vegetables, a piece of bread, a big glass of tea, and dessert. Correct. I know I'm hurting. I'm hurting some people's feelings right now. Hey, I've learned to sit down and be comfortable with two vegetables, protein, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a good glass of water, mm -hmm. and a piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's it. Mm -hmm. it. You have to change your mindset. Yes. We don't eat. We now eat to 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 survive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're not surviving to eat. Yeah. Honey, they will say it all the time. Honey, I don't, I don't live to eat. I eat to live, honey. And 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 you gotta do what works for you. That, talk about that for a moment, please. We're sharing. We're sharing. Why can't, why can't you do what I did and it works for you? Why can't I do what Charisma did and it works for me? Honey, two different people, two different bodies, our body types, our condition. We're not the same person. When what was that? Uh, when David was getting ready to fight, he couldn't wear uh, Saul's garments. They were too big. <laughs> Though it was not made for Preaching him. here today on this on this Tuesday. It was not for him. He couldn't put on somebody else's garment to fight a battle that was for him to fight. He had to have his own garment, his own thing, everything. So we have to do what is fashioned for you as the individual. Because some people, they have all these stuff out here. They have keto. They have, you know, uh, pescatarian, vegetarian, all of these things. And there are people who um, they can't do keto. Keto don't work for them. It's right. people that being a vegetarian doesn't work for them. I'm pescatarian for the most part. I don't eat meat. I eat seafood every now and then. For everybody that's not going to work. Cindy and I both. For everybody that's not going to work. And I don't have to have meat every day. I don't have to have fish every day. I haven't had no fish and nothing like that in the last couple of days. I don't eat. I just I don't have to have it. But right. when I was eating, just like I did yesterday, I was able to get up and go out here and walk. I went and worked right. out after I finished. So it's like, because I'm not weighed down, you're not heavy, you're not consumed. So you have to do what works for your body. And even if that means getting with your, getting you a trainer, getting with you someone that's going to advise you, finding people that understand, talking to your doctor, you know, my, and finding out the things that you can do to supplement what you're not getting. So if you're not eating red meat, what can I eat to supplement and to make sure that that's I'm getting good. things that I need? You have to, you know, just... Try, you know, just diving into this thing and trying to make this some type of microwave type of situation. You know, you can't do that. You have to, you got to in, in, and find out, get all of the information that you need so that you can do your very best because you want to be your best. So you got to do your best. You got to do that, that work and find out and not just be out here by yourself. And then that accountability and having people in your life that understands where you're going and what you're doing and what you're trying to do. And that'll keep you uh, motivated. I tell people all the time, iron sharpens iron. And to be able to say, listen, yeah. okay, y'all eat what y'all gonna eat. That's fine. But me on the other hand, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna eat. And I started gradually. 
you guys. I started gradually. I started, I cut out beef years ago, and then I was just eating turkey, fish, and uh, chicken. Every now and then, maybe some pork, you know, and then eventually I cut pork out. And then after a while, I just, I just cut it all out. And then I went at one point where I was not eating any type of meat. Uh, no fish, no nothing. I did that for several months. And then... Two years. It, I did that for two years. Mm-hmm. Straight. Straight. I mean, and after so long, you don't even miss it. I, I was in Kenya, and I, and I said this, the things that I was accustomed to in the U.S., I realized that I really didn't have to have that. They were luxuries. Wow. Those were things that were that made things a convenience that I didn't I realized that I can really live and function without some of the things that I thought I just had to have because I'm in, you know, close to where I, how I was brought up. I just feel like it was a part of me and I needed that to survive. And exactly. I realized yeah. I didn't need it. And now I've gotten to the point now where it's like all of those things that I thought I needed to, you know, to feel better or to make myself feel better and all of this kind of thing. Well, I, I did. I, I made a, I reached a goal. So let me celebrate. So let me celebrate with a piece of cake. Celebrate with a piece of cheesecake. No, I don't have to have that. That's, that, that was a trick to try to keep me bound. That's a trick of the enemy? Oh, that was a trick. To keep me, and and we have to understand that the enemy does not want you to fulfill purpose. And oh, whatever man. obstacle that he can put in your way and give to you and to cause it to be a roadblock or you to put up this wall or to think this is who I am, this is how I'm going to always be. That devil is a liar and I counsel that over your life now in Jesus' name. That is not who you are. God has more for you. You're going to accomplish it. You're going to do it. God has anointed you and you're going to achieve and accomplish everything that God God, yes, God. Has in store and has said that you're going to do and you're going to be healthy you're going to do it the right way you're not in going to look the Jesus, easy way yeah. out you're going to do it and you're going to go through the process we're not skipping any steps we're going to follow the process follow the process so many have asked us as we decided to do this and we realized that we were being asked a lot of the same questions. And the main question that we're asked is, what are you doing? What is your process? What are you eating? What kinds of things are you doing? And it's amazing when we began to share what we're doing. It's just the old fashioned way. We get out and walk. We're moving our bodies. We are watching what we eat. We are drinking. Um, a lot of water we're, we're making sure that we're accountable that we have accountability partners and a lot of people when we tell them those things they don't believe it it's like but what about the shortcuts like what about your cheat days like what about you know everybody wants to talk about what about the easy way i hear what you're saying but what about this and what about that do you get to eat desserts do you get to drink sodas do you get to eat bread I'm telling you guys, when you're trying to make a life-altering change, you can't look at the easy way. You can't look at the shortcuts. You've got to stop thinking about, I want to do this, but I want to do it the quickest way possible. I started in 2017. This has been a three-year process. It didn't happen overnight. Charisma did not start last week. It doesn't happen overnight. And so, you know, I don't knock people that have surgeries. I don't knock people that wear the bands or that get injections. Whatever you need to do to get your body to where you can function, you do that. But remember, when you're asking certain people what they've done and they begin to share their journey, it's not going to always be uh, peaches and cream. It's not been easy. We sh we're sharing with you. We've cried. There's been days we don't feel like working out. Sometimes I don't like the treadmill. It's hot outside. I don't want to walk. Mm -hmm. It's hot. And we in a pandemic. Yes. But I can't go back to the way I used to be. 
Yes, Lord. I don't want to go back. I enjoy the fact that I try on certain things. I didn't even realize it, Charisma. I'd be putting on stuff that I hadn't worn in a year, and I didn't even realize it. I'd be in a hurry, and I'd run out the house. I was preaching over at my brother's church, New Fellowship, in January, and my skirt was falling off. Lord have mercy. When I walked in the pastor study, my sister-in-law said, oh, my God, somebody give me some pins. Because mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, this is these, these are my clothes, but they don't yeah. fit me anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to adjust not just my mindset. Uh, I was going to ask you how it felt even when you go shopping, even when you look in your closet, just to know I can't wear that anymore. Some of it is my favorite outfits. They don't mm -hmm. fit me anymore. That's a word to somebody today. What mm -hmm. used to fit you doesn't fit you anymore. When you yeah. change your mind about who you are, the things that you used to do, the places you used to go, the stuff you used to wear is not going to fit you anymore. Not anymore? Mm -mm. It's not. That's and so you need the right people around you. You need people around you who's not saying, I like you the way you were. And I'm glad you like me the way, the way I was. Thank you. But I need people in my life that are going to push me. That are going to push me into accountability. That are going to call me and say, what you eat today? Did you work out today? Did you walk? How you feeling, Cindy? I've had people like that in my life. Yes. And it has made a difference. Charisma yes. Evans has been one of those people. We were all the way in Cozumel on a boat doing a women's conference. She was the guest psalmist. I was the speaker. And on a boat, y'all know you can eat whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can eat any time of day, night you want. It's free. You mm -hmm. have, well, that ain't free to pay for it. Yeah. But even on a boat, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't I don't want any meat. I just mm -hmm. want what I've been eating because I have made up my mind. Absolutely. I want to tell someone today, no matter how hard it's been for you, not just to lose weight, but whatever you've been trying to accomplish, through our journey, I pray that we have helped you as you guys have watched us and, and, and liked our pictures and commented. I pray that you understand that this is a lifestyle change and that our lives have helped you to understand that there's nothing too hard for you to accomplish. God is the reason we're able to do this. We communicate with God. We pray and we ask him for what we need. And he's changed our bodies on the outside so that we can do a greater work for him on the inside. And that's what we bring to y'all. And so in the comment section, if you have any questions, I mean, I can't believe it. We already been on an hour. If you have any questions for Charisma or for myself, please feel free to ask us. We may not be able to get to all of them today. But we want this part of our journey to help you. This won't be the only time that you see us. We're committed to helping men, women, boys, and girls come up in the area of transformation through their weight loss journey, through their, their obstacles in ministry, those things that may have been hindering you. And if it has anything to do with your body, I think we can help you. Because together, how much weight have we lost? Charisma, how many pounds have you lost? 74. <laughs> Some honest, honestly, nothing but hearts right now. Y'all come. She said she lost 74 pounds. That is so awesome. So 60 and 74. We are another person. 134 pounds. Yep. We a whole nother person. <laughs> Indeed. Somebody on here watching us now weigh 134. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody do. I am so grateful to God. How can we get the 12 minute video from your brother? It's Temple 12. He has a page. It's called Temple 12. The Roman numerals X11. His Facebook name is just Patrick J. Diggs. If you hit him up, he will definitely be happy to get that to you. As a matter of fact, we at a time right now, Charisma and I want to give some things away. Y'all been such a good audience to us today. I don't know who it is, but who on here is really, really wanting to just uh, get a life transformation and you don't have Charisma Evans CD. I need to see your name real quickly. Who want a Charisma Evans CD? I need to see you. Now, you can't already have it. 
Thank you, Marvin, for being super proud of us. Thank you. This has been so great. I pray that it has helped somebody. Somebody said, Charisma, can I have the black and white dress from your <laughs> I hate my yarn. Bye, my yarn. <laughs> oh, that's your cousin. She said, can she have? So wonderful, awesome accomplishment. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions? Uh, um, some question has... is for the both of you. Do you have a personal trainer or do you have specific exercises that you do weekly? I'll answer and then I'll let Charisma answer. My brother, of course, he's my he's my go-to person. When I need to work a lot, right now I'm working on my arms. Let me show y'all something. I've lost so much weight that the skin on my arms is just crazy. I don't mind showing you. Look at this. This right here is really my arm. But this is the excess fat. And so my brother is working with me to tone. It's one thing to lose weight. See, all this is just bones. It's one thing to lose weight, but then you've got to deal with the excess. Who I'm going to preach that. The excess. The, the stuff yeah. that's hanging off. The ugly stuff. This fat part right here. He's going to work with me. So what do I do? I'm doing weights next. Where I will be just lifting weights to tone up all of this that I've lost. My legs look the same way. My legs look like my arms. And I'm like, I don't want to look like cottage cheese. So yeah. I have to, to tone so my brother works with me. There are specific exercises that I do for my arms. I'm constantly, I'm lifting. I'm lifting. Even when I'm in the house, sometimes I'm just sitting, studying. He told me to just lift, do windmills, go forward, go back to, to make sure I'm strengthening the fatty tissue and that it becomes muscle and not remain fat. Mm -hmm. My legs, I do squats. I do like 50 squats at a time. It tones up my legs. Running in place, leg lifts, all of that helps me with the areas that I want to, to tone up in. And so Charisma, I believe, has a personal trainer, and she's going to give y'all her information about who's been helping her with her transformation. Um, God, uh, the guy that's at our church, uh, that's over our gym, uh, name is Coach Mickey. And so that's who pretty much guides me through my different exercises. So mostly, uh, like when I'm like, uh, if I'm on the treadmill, um, then I have weights, go to Academy. Yes. Three pounds. I have five pound weights as well. And in doing stuff like this, like for your arms, you know, mm -hmm. so out to the side like this, you know, I do the mm -hmm. run, do this, and then I go up, up, because my, my area is my arms as well. So you have those, um, and then there's things, girl, listen, I hate my arms, <laughs> but that's, that's my target. That's my target area, honey, to get all of this, because I have just... So uh, my arms, and then, of course, I have things, you know, like, you know, doing sit-ups and different things like that for, you know, the stomach. And then I definitely, uh, I walk. Um, sometimes, every now and again, I might add a little run to it. Just depends. And because I kind of fell off on my workout a little bit just because of schedules and all that kind of stuff, um, here is I'm getting my body back conditioned to that. So I work out, like last week I worked out six days, and it was just cardio. Some days I run the bleachers, uh, do stuff yeah. like that. Um, but just constantly, uh, just constantly walking. And then, you know, like the leg launches and things like that you could do for your legs. And, and there's never a day that I don't do anything. Yeah. Something's being done to this body every day. Yeah. Tasha Andre says she doesn't have your CD. What about that? You don't have the CD? Tasha Bondry, where are you? Somebody, okay. Tasha Bondry says she doesn't have okay. it. Okay. I got so you. So you need to ask her if that's true. Tasha, is that true? Tell her to uh, inbox me and I'm going to get it to her. I need to see. Thank uh, you, ladies, for the information. I'm taking notes. This is really helping me today. Bless you, ladies, for each having this play. Oh, good stuff. Thank you so much. Keeping it moving, boo. We appreciate you. Thank you, Makisha, for telling us we inspire you. 
we we realize that we we preach and we sing we do quite a bit but this there's another area of ministry fitness and our bodies it's important and it doesn't do any good to do all this and our bodies are not in shape so this is just another avenue of ministry that god has laid on our heart and we want to make sure we use it to the best Charisma, take the floor. Talk about your product. Tell them where they can get your information, where they can book you if they, when this pandemic is over. Give away whatever you want to give away, and then we'll let them know when we're going to be back. Uh, I have a new shirt that I'm working on as we speak, and so um, once I get that, if you um i'll have that information and then cd wise i definitely i have forever more so we have that and if you inbox me or just follow if you're following me or whatever then just hit me up and i can i'll make sure we get it to you and uh make that happen we'll make it happen i i promise you i, I want to i'm gonna definitely uh be a blessing and, and so into you that's awesome thank you so much um, a lot of times people feel like they can't move forward and that they can't do what they accomplished. I have a word entitled, this is not the time to faint. And it's very important to me. And I want to bless somebody with it. This is not the time to faint. If you've been having a really rough time, um, even with, with trying to lose weight or trying to adjust to just you know, getting to the place where you can find the time, where you can balance what you need to do. The scripture says, um, the psalmist David said, I would have fainted unless mm -hmm. I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, he starts out saying who the Lord is, that he's his light and his salvation. But somewhere yeah. he got tripped up and he said, but I would have fainted. Because he had a moment where he thought about the things that had happened. And I know somebody today is saying, that's me. I know who the Lord is. I know what he's done. But I would have lost it had I not believed in the goodness of the Lord. You got to keep believing. Who am I talking to? You need this DVD in your life where you can just sit and watch it. If you don't want to say who you are, right here in the comments, go inbox me and just write, I would have fainted. I'm going to send this to you. No charge. And you get to read about me. Look, ooh, you get to hear all about some good to read about my life. I'm going to send this to you for free. Just for being on live today, I want you to have it. Inbox me and say, I would have fainted. Because we're going to get you out of that fainting situation. And you're going to stand on your feet so you can do these exercises and you can get your transformation. How about that? We're coming back. We're coming back in two weeks. And this is what we want to know. We need to know what you guys want to hear about next. You know, is it meal prep? Is it challenges, strengths? Is it, you know, how to motivate you? How do we stay motivated? Talk to us. I really want to hear from you. I don't just want to come and we just hear ourselves talking. Today was really awesome. What kind of things would you like to hear us talk about? We're going to go for a few months. That's what God said. Maybe three, four months where we're just going to come every other week. And we're going to come on this platform and share our life with you. We're transparent. We don't mind letting you know the woes and the good stuff that has taken place. Whatever you need to hear from our mouths, we're available to you. What would you like to hear next time? We want to talk about self-esteem. We want to talk about living for you, loving you. I shared with Charisma the other day, if Whitney didn't say anything else, when she said learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all, if you don't love you, you can't love anyone else. And so we're here and we're, we're readily available to give you what you need on this platform until God says, you've done what I told you to do. Charisma and I are so glad to be here. And if you want to follow us, continue to follow us on our pages. I pray that you guys already are. Hook up somebody that you know with us. Tell them to come on. Join Cynthia Diggs and Charisma Evans because they're talking about some real stuff. They're talking about the external and the internal. A real live conversation 
with Charisma Evans and Cynthia Diggs. If you would like to be a blessing, feel free to do so. Y'all know we work in full-time ministry. We don't charge people to do things like this. It is our heart to see you come up in the area where you are bound. We want to see you free, especially during this time. If you want to be a blessing, be a blessing. Charisma's cash app, I believe, is dollar sign. Is it Charisma Evans? Charisma Lynn. Dollar sign, Charisma. Charisma. K-I-R, not C-H. A lot of people want to call us C-H-A-R. It's dollar sign. K-I-R-I-S-M-A-L-Y-N-N. If Mayan is still on, she'll pin these two for you. Mine is dollar sign dig C. If you would like to sew at any time into our lives, because we need some new clothes. <laughs> we can't wear our clothes. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, ha I have a couple people that have said, how can I sew? And I thank God for you guys even asking. Dollar Absolutely. sign Charisma Lynn, dollar sign Dixie. We are here for you. God, we thank you for this time and we bless you. And we pray now that those that have been stagnant, those that have been in an area where they feel bound, Father, in the area of losing weight, in the area, Father, of building their body to be strengthened, where they can do a work for you, Father. We just cancel the assignment of the enemy right now. We pray that the words we have spoken have liberated somebody to bring them to the place where they say, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I pray that you would be with my sister, Lady Charisma Evans, as she goes to and fro and ministers across the country. Continue to strengthen her body and keep her strong, keep her healthy, keep her happy, keep her humble, and keep her healthy for the kingdom building process. And then bless me, your servant, Father, to do your will and to do your work. Until we come back again, we thank you for your many blessings you bestowed upon us. Thank you for every set of eyes and every set of ears that have listened to us today we give you the glory and the honor to be able to talk to your people and for them to engage with us in the mighty name of jesus we thank you for the first conversation with you and the conversation we've been able to have with one another in the name of jesus we pray amen y'all be blessed until we come back again share this with somebody that you know Share it on your page. You never know what might happen as a result of just sharing. Follow Charisma Evans. Follow Cynthia Diggs because God has some great things in store for us and we want to share them with you. Have a good afternoon. We'll see you in two weeks.